bonjour à toutes, bonjour à toutes celles et ceux qui viennent. Hello de... everyone who is joining us and welcome to this webinar. We are here to talk about the Beef City Spotlight webinar that showcases pollinator initiatives uh, today in Montreal. We're just going to give uh, participants a few moments to connect before we begin. And for those who want to listen in English, interpretation is available. You can access the English audio by clicking on the interpretation icon at the bottom of your screen. There you can select English. Uh, and welcome to today's webinar. Today we will be hosting a BCT Spotlight webinar that will showcase pollinator initiative in Montreal in Quebec. We'll just give it a minute or so for people to stream in before getting started. Donc, euh, encore une fois, je le rappelle, nous allons juste attendre encore quelques minutes. So, we're just going to wait a few more minutes to give participants enough time to connect before we begin. A little reminder that if you want to listen to the webinar in, in uh, English, then you just need to uh, select uh, English from the interpretation icon that is at the bottom of the screen, the little globe icon. Uh, okay, I think we're ready to go. Hello to everyone that's just joined. Today our presenters will be speaking in French, but English interpretation is available for those that would like to listen it in English. To access the English audio, please click into the interpretation icon at the bottom of your screen and select English from there. So, très bien, nous sommes prêts à commencer. Bonjour à toutes celles et ceux qui viennent de se joindre à nous. So, welcome. Uh, we're ready to begin. Everybody, hello to everyone who joined us. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to talk about the B-City Spotlight webinar featuring pollinator initiatives in Montreal. The purpose of these B-City Spotlight webinars is to showcase actions that are being taken in municipalities across Canada to protect uh, pollinators. Today's speakers uh, are coming from the Bureau de la Transition Écologique, uh, the Ecological Transition Office, and uh, sorry, and Resilience Office in Montreal, and the Insectarium as well, uh, the Espace pour la Vie à Montréal in Montreal. Anyone would like to stream in, in English, please click the interpretation um, icon at the bottom of your screen and select English from there. Donc, avant de rentrer dans le vif du sujet, j'aimerais commencer par reconnaître le territoire. Oh, so, before getting into the nitty gritty, I'd like to start by acknowledging the territory, the territory on which uh, Montreal is located. The city of Canada recognizes that we are located on Aboriginal territory, which has never been ceded. Recognize that uh, Kananahake Nation, and the, as the custodian of the lands and waters on which uh, we gather today, Jojo Gay. Slash Montreal has historically been known as a gathering place for many First Nations, and today a diverse Aboriginal population as well as other peoples reside here. So it is with respect for the connections to the past, present, and future that BC City Canada, Canada recognizes the ongoing relationships between Aboriginal peoples and others in the Montreal community. Today, as I mentioned, we are very pleased to welcome three speakers from Montreal. I'll introduce each of them in more detail in a moment, but uh, we have Marise Barrett from the Office of Ecological Transition and Resilience, Marjolaine Giroux, who comes from the Montreal Espace pour la Vie, Space for Life at the Insectarium, 
and Jacinthe Daprato from the uh, uh, borough of uh, Saint Laurent. So Marie's uh, is an entomologist and has been working at the Insectarium and the Espace pour la Vie de Montréal for more than 30 years. She's also a fly specialist, was interested in all aspects of uh, of uh, entomology. Jacinthe Dapro is a bi biologist uh, by training and a planning consultant for the borough of Saint Laurent in Montreal. She works in the fields of ecological man management. Uh, natural uh, environments, protection and biodiversity, and adaptation to climate change. We also have Etienne uh, with us, who is uh, in architecture. He has training in architecture, and he also works for the borough of Saint Laurent. And his mandate includes uh, uh, ecological uh, management of natural areas and uh, very other, various other initiatives related to the environment. So I think we will have some time at the end for a few questions, if you have any. So please write them in the uh, Q&A section. It might be Q&R in this case, uh, question and réponse in French. And so we're going to start on that. We're going to start uh, the webinar. Thank you very much, Tadel, for that presentation. I'm Marie Barrett, uh, and I work for the general uh, so, as we said, uh, the general uh, executive uh, committee for the for the city, and also in um, in ecological management. And, uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you the big. Uh, I'm going to go over the uh, most important aspects of our work and what we're doing, and then Justine is going to get into the nitty gritty. And. Etienne is going to do a portion of the presentation as well. So a bit of context to start. The uh, city of Montreal uh, is in the south uh, of Quebec, and uh, we're in a in a humid uh, continental climate, and we're in a 6A uh, uh, climate zone. It was changed in 2015. Uh, the federal government did this, and in Montreal, with climate change, we were increased uh, to a warmer uh, climate zone, so this can have an impact on the types of uh, vegetables and, uh, anyway, different kinds of uh, plants that we can grow, so that can have an impact on uh, pollinators as well. Uh, Sometimes this can be confusing. So I wanted to present the island of Montreal, which is really the agglomeration. And you can see here on this diagram, this is uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, yellow here, you can see the 15 cities that uh, were integrated into the agglomeration, uh, into Greater Montreal. And then you can see the other sections here in orange as well. So what I'm gonna present today is going to be on the uh, plan for a pollinator protection. And that's uh, uh, for um, the orange sections that you see here, uh, just to give you the geographical context here. Next slide, please. Uh, so all of us know that uh, biodiversity has been uh, declining on a worldwide scale. And uh, currently there are uh, several uh, species that are uh, threatened with extinction. And uh, the uh, pollinator group uh, is uh, certain regions, there's up to 40% uh, of pollinators that are uh, threatened. And so protecting pollinators is indeed protecting a large portion of our biodiversity. So in Montreal, uh, a few years ago, two years ago, the Insectarium did a big piece of work uh, to try to look at uh, all the pollinators that we have on our territory. Uh, and we have a nice uh, figure here, 435 species. And so half of those species are bumblebees, uh, bom bombus. And uh, there's also uh, native uh, bees and solitary wasps in there. Uh, we also have uh, different cerv cervidae uh, flies. We have different flies as well, uh, hummingbirds, uh, uh, which are also pollinators that we can find in Montreal. Next slide. So recently, the city of Montreal hosted the COP15 on biodiversity. The city was very involved in in, in organizing the uh, the event, but also uh, had several legacies that it uh, set forth. Uh, 
So that one of them is the plan to protect pollinators, which was unveiled in November, last November. So it's uh, this is several months and years really of work uh, collaboration. Uh, so this involved the parks in Montreal, and we've all been working on uh, drafting that plan together. So with this uh, pollinator protection plan, we want we want to set uh, the foundation for these uh, the next five years to protect the pollinators in Montreal. And uh, there's three axes to this, 12 orientations and 14 actions involved. So I'm going to show you the first two axes here and all the all the orientations and actions that are involved there. I'm only going to give you a few uh, examples for each of these axes. So the first uh, axis uh, is uh, to uh conserve create and connect uh, favorable habitats for pollinators so we want to continue uh, the protection and restoration of natural environments increase connectivity between habitat patches create habitats and amenities that take into account the needs of pollinators maintain open spaces in protected natural areas for instance even uh, open um, uh, this can be a uh, uh, land that isn't in use really as well, and also wilderness. Uh, and then the last one is to develop uh, urban planning tools that promote uh, greening. Uh, so um, among the actions that we uh, wanted to use to uh, conserve habitat here, we wanted to develop develop uh, five projects, uh, ecological projects across uh, the, the, the island of Montreal. And so we can see here that, that there's a corridor, an ecological corridor uh, that is progressing. Uh, uh, at the bottom on the right, you can see a type of action that's being used by uh, where we want to have uh, 25 uh, hectares uh, of, um, of uh, mowing or cutting, where we're going to try to uh, uh, aim to uh, help the vegetable succession in, in natural parks uh, in uh, Montreal. So part of our plan in five years, so the, in the 19 uh, boroughs of Montreal, we want to create at least one large uh, uh, habitat uh, that is favorable to pollinators. So uh, we want to be, uh, we want to set the example uh, and uh, showcase uh, this uh, so that it can be replicated uh, by citizens and uh, and uh, across different uh, areas of our municip municipality. The next uh, axis is to improve the conditions, uh, the living conditions of pollinators, and we can do this in different ways. In Montreal, we have uh, well, we aimed uh, to have 14 uh, different ways of improving uh, these, this. this. Uh, the, there are uh, uh, management practices. We can uh, make sure that we have uh, vegetables that pr that uh, promote uh, the presence of uh, pollinators as well, making sure that we have native plants uh, that have uh, flowering times that are ideal. We're also aiming to uh, eliminate the use of pesticides coming from outside. And we also want to improve, obviously, the cohabitation of honeybees and uh, native pollinators. Next slide. So an example of actions uh, to improve uh, these uh, life living conditions, well, we want to uh, increase the, oh, sorry, reduce the, the frequency of, uh, of uh, cutting uh, uh, gr grasses around the city. So that's two examples that you see on the screen here that are in the same uh, borough where we decided to, instead of uh, mow, putting uh, grass to mow down, well, we uh, put in a more uh, sustainable uh, habitats uh, to favor or promote uh, and increase biodiversity. So you can imagine that uh, these are habitats that are much more propitious to uh, attracting uh, pollinators here. And uh, in parks, uh, this is where we can do a differentiated management uh, uh, to try to adapt ma uh, uh, maintenance uh, uh, so that we can have sections that aren't uh, 
well, sections that are mowed down so that users can obviously enjoy that. But uh, certain zones of uh, certain areas of parks, uh, we're going to leave uh, where there's higher and more diversified uh, vegetation. Uh, and that way we're able to uh, create more, uh, uh, we're able to uh, promote uh, biodiversity. So another example of improving uh, living conditions is to incent uh, uh, various uh, boroughs to uh, distribute different uh, species of plants uh, free of charge to uh, residents. So uh, we want to choose, uh, here's some of the types of uh, vegetable, uh, sorry, uh, species that we're going to, obviously we're going to favor native uh, plants here. Next uh, slide, please. The city of Montreal has a bylaw in place uh, on uh, uh, outside on pesticides, but uh, we've also restricted over the last two years, uh, we further restricted use uh, uh, outside of uh, buildings, for instance. There's also a new portion to this uh, new section, if you will, to this bylaw. Uh, so we're the only city in uh, Canada that prohibits uh, the sale of uh, certain domestic uh, uh, class of pesticides to citizens. We also pr uh, increased uh, the list of uh, molecules that are included on, on the, in this. Uh, so it was greatly uh, broadened, in fact. And so we're, uh, we've are we prohibited the use of uh, uh, neonicotinoids, uh, glyphosate, etc., cetera, um, in various sectors of activity. And uh, we've also uh, glyphosate is a pesticide that uh, is very bad for uh, pollinators. Uh, it's harmful to pollinators. So this is just a summary here. Anyway, uh, the city of Montreal also uh, made it mandatory for companies that use uh, pesticides outside of buildings. Now these companies need to have a, per a yearly permit uh, that is uh, issued by our office. And at the end of the year, they also need to send us a record of their use of pesticides uh, that were used on the across the island of Montreal. So that gives us a good idea of uh, what's being used by companies as well. Uh, so the current rule uh, is one of the most severe in Quebec, one of the most uh, uh, strict. Uh, so this uh, we want to continue to increase this to certain types of uh, land. Uh, so we talked about uh, golf courses specifically. They can use certain types of products that are mentioned in uh, in Appendix 1 of the bylaw. So in order to, pro to protect pollinators, uh, we, we have uh, stated that we want to uh, expand this to golf courses as well. So I think I've gone through I think I've uh, gone over the first two axes of our, of our protection plan, and I'm going to turn it over to Marlene, who's going to talk to you about uh, Axis 3 and the actions that are being done by Espace pour la Vie, the space for life in Montreal. Thank you very much, Marie. Uh, so the third uh, axis uh, is to recognize the importance of pollinators for biodiversity, and this uh, axis has three orientations. So it's to uh, deepen the knowledge of uh, pollinators and their habitats, uh, to share uh, the knowledge of pollinators, and to uh, recognize and celebrate pollinators. So before going any further, I'm going to present to you what the Insectarium and the Espace pour la Vie are doing, uh, uh, which are institutions that are associated with the City of Montreal. And uh, the Insectarium is part of the uh, Espace pour la Vie. Uh, which includes uh, three, uh, the biodome of Montreal, uh, the bios biosphere, and the the planetarium, and uh, the uh, uh, the botanical garden. And so uh, all of these, uh, we the mission is to uh, allow humans to get closer to nature, and the insectarium. Uh, aims to transform the way we look at insects and encourage action for preservation. So it's uh, been in uh, the insectarium has been 
with us for 30 years, uh, but we have a new building uh, that was uh, finished last year where we present, we're presenting uh, naturalized, a new uh, collection of naturalized insects. And we also have in front of the uh, insectarium a new garden uh, with the, uh, it's, a, it's a pollinator garden. Uh, next uh, slide, please. It's a space uh, where we can uh, uh, exper experiment and, and, and discover uh, new things. And uh, so this is a, a space where we're using, uh, um, we have more than 75 uh, uh, plant species and uh, uh, we, it's designed uh, to provide sources of nectar throughout the season, uh, various seasons, and some there's several host plants. There are features to encourage nesting and uh, of certain species and solitary bees, etc. Uh, so in 2023, 2024, we want to set up uh, uh, a space that is uh, propitious to inviting uh, certain species of solitary bees, because there's a lot of people who are asking me questions about uh, uh, bees uh, that uh, lay their nests in soil and uh, people don't, aren't aware of that. So uh, the idea is to present, uh, we're going to present this in our garden uh, to be able to demystify all of the, the ideas that people have about this, about uh, bees that uh, lay their uh, nests in, uh, so in the soil. So the uh, pollinator garden, uh, well, we're going to try to uh, to uh, fulfill certain objectives uh, here, and there are going to be uh, uh, people on site uh, to answer people's questions, to walk with people through the garden to discuss uh, uh, the various insects they will see. They're going to uh, incite them to take photos as well uh, so that they can uh, post uh, their photos when they get home. Uh, we also have... Uh, uh, game, a questionnaire that's called uh, uh, From One Flower to the Next, and uh, it's a Plinko game uh, with um, tokens. Uh, if people don't know the game, uh, it's uh, you have uh, tokens. Uh, in this case, they're going to be bumblebees. And so uh, you can sort of see it here on the bottom uh, picture. And so there's going to be a set of questions. Uh, uh, regarding uh, pollinator protection, how to cohabitate with them, and how we can protect them. So the uh, uh, the host will uh, tell people more about all of the pollinators around them. So another activity that we that is uh, going on in the insectarium is to develop uh, the importance of uh, pollinators is research. And so this is a research project that was uh, completed over the last few years and will continue this year. And it is uh, on uh, pollinators nesting boxes. And what we did here is that we ch compared various different types of uh, nesting boxes, uh, ones that have uh, different types of uh, hollows or, or stems. So you can see here the six different types of nesting boxes, uh, and they've been set up in uh, Montreal's uh, green uh, alleys and in various, uh, in the botanical gardens and in um, uh, community gardens as well. Next uh, slide, please. So the result here is uh, we want, uh, these can either be um, logs uh, occupied by uh, or, or larger cavities. Uh, uh, so um, the logs were occupied by. In fact, there were, there were, most of the insects went towards those. Uh, the ca the larger cavities, uh, which went from five to eight millimeters in diameter. Uh, were preferred by mega chill uh, bees. Uh, and so what came out of this, uh, the recommendations that is, uh, coming from this uh, experiment that we did, we, uh, we want people to use logs. Uh, we want to favor cavities ranging from three to 10 millimeters. And we also want to make sure that they are kept clean, especially at the beginning of the se season. Uh, either we can create new uh, hollows, logs, uh, 
uh, we want to make sure that the pollinators can, uh, in fact, uh, get into the cavities and uh, use them. So next uh, slide, please. Uh, another program that allows us to understand uh, the diversity of poll pollinators is uh, the My Garden uh, Initiative, uh, which is also a Espace de la Vie program. And so uh, we're encouraging concrete actions here to preserve uh, uh, biodiversity and uh, support a host of pollinators. So it is free of charge. It's open to all residents of Quebec, not just uh, Montreal uh, residents. And it's also open to anybody who has a garden, not only uh, backyard gardens, but it can be business gardens, uh, schools, alleys, uh, uh, green roofs, uh, community gardens. Uh, so there are all sorts of, uh, well, any type of there's several types of gardens that are accepted into this uh, this initiative, and to have a certificate to get the certification, you need to respect certain follow certain criteria that are uh, set out on our website. And there you can see the different types of gardens. They can be ones that are there's one that's accredited or certified for uh, monarch uh, butterflies, another one for different uh, bird species, and another one for bees. So you can see this also in the gallery on this website uh, of uh, garden visitors, Jardin Nolt. Uh, so people can, here you can see that the biodiversity gardens, there are 908 of them uh, in the Montreal region. Next uh, slide, please. Another program that uh, the Insectarium is, has is the Monarch Commission, which is a participatory science program, which invites people to share their observations, not only on uh, monarch butterflies, but also on milkweed. And this will allow getting these, seeing, with these observations, uh, scientists will be able to locate monarch breeding hotspots and also establish effective uh, conservation measures for that species, which is of course threatened. Next slide, please. Just to give you an idea of the number of participants. In 2019, we had a lot of participants before the pandemic and it started going down, but now it's starting to go back up as you can see with uh, 892 participants in 2022. Next slide. You can also see in terms of the number of uh, milkweed uh, observations, also of monarch butterflies observed, uh, you can see here that we had a maximum of 134,000 uh, uh, milkweed uh, observations and uh, 28,388 uh, monarchs that were observed. Uh, so we're very happy with these results. Next slide. Uh, I'm gonna before turning it over to Etienne. I just wanted to tell you that on uh, the on July 8th and 9th, uh, we're going to have a celebration at the Insectarium, and it'll be an opportunity to discuss with the uh, uh, pollinator experts and to see the gardens with them to celebrate uh, the uh, pollinator uh, um, uh, pollinators with them. So thank you very much, Marjolaine. Hello. To everyone, uh, sorry, I'm going to present to you uh, the various programs and uh, different uh, concrete actions that are that can be done uh, in, in, with regard to pollinators. Just to give you a bit of context to start, uh, Marie spoke to you a little bit about Montreal, the island of Montreal, and you can see on the uh, the photo on the side on. The, on the right here, you can see the borough of Saint Laurent, which is a huge uh, borough, as you can see. It has a, it's a very large area, and uh, so obviously our actions uh, have a great scope. Uh, the more that we can learn about pollinators, the better it is. So uh, to date, we have 107,000 uh, workers in uh, Saint Laurent. There's a lot of uh, development in the area as well, so our population continues to grow there. And so, sorry, there's 106,927 inhabitants uh, and 107,000 workers that go through the area on a daily basis. So, uh, this used to be an agricultural area that was uh, slowly converted uh, into a large industrial park. And so, uh, to date, 70% uh, of the area is industrial. 
uh, with all the issues that come with that, uh, uh, impermeable surfaces, lack of uh, biodiversity and the poor connection with the uh, uh, natural areas. And also there's heat islands. Uh, so all of those issues, uh, we can uh, mitigate them uh, with uh, in, uh, putting in place uh, different areas that are propitious to attracting uh, uh, pollinators. And so we have 400,000 uh, square uh, meters of uh, grassy wasteland uh, uh, that are that we're planning to convert. And so I'm going to give you a little bit more information about this. In terms of the policies of the uh, borough, well, we did adopt in 2021 our uh, climate emergency plan, uh, which comes uh, straight down from uh, Montreal's climate plan that Magnes and her team is has worked on and uh, so you can see that we're using the term uh, uh, climate emergency because it's not just climate uh, change now we're really in an emergency situation i think we can acknowledge that and so in our uh, in that plan uh, we have an, a portion that's uh, completely dedicated to biodiversity several actions uh, that are related to uh, protecting pollinators uh, improving um, habitats we also have indicators, performance indicators, and uh, budgets uh, that are attributed to that per plan, the climate emergency plan. In 2017, we were the first uh, 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 borough to become a, a monarch uh, uh, friend, uh, <laughs> to be a monarch uh, friend uh, borough. Uh, and in 2017, uh, we also worked with certain uh, of uh, some of uh, Jordan's colleagues uh, to work on the B. To become a B city as well. Uh, so uh, we have a plan that we're going to adopt uh, to create a, a biodiversity corridor. And uh, that is a plan that came through uh, an architecture and uh, a landscaping. Uh, 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 co competition, if you will, or contest. And it was a worldwide one. And obviously, uh, this affects uh, various uh, natural uh, areas. And so uh, we want to uh, protect uh, existing natural areas, uh, parks and uh, private and public spaces, uh, uh, and to create uh, ecological connections. And all this uh, is uh, to, we really want to involve uh, uh, we want to provide education to uh, uh, citizens as well, citizen education uh, with various different paths that they can take to learn more. Uh, we've created the, 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 the directive uh, plan that uh, you can connect, you can, we have a PDF version of that uh, that we can share with you. And you can see some of the images here that were proposed in the plan. And we won uh, several uh, 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 awards uh, internationally for having created that plan. The next thing that we did is that we uh, created a Monarch Watch uh, station in uh, Marcel Lorrain Park. And the objective here was to create a permanent uh, uh, habitat for the uh, Monarch butterfly. Uh, which is, it's obviously a symbol of uh, uh, the fight uh, to preserve uh, biodiversity and uh, save uh, pollinators. Uh, so uh, uh, we uh, used a huge uh, portion of land uh, that we set aside and uh, uh, there's also the common reed, uh, which is an invasive species. You're probably familiar with that. Uh, and uh, so there was a loss of a significant loss of habitat for uh, native species uh, because of that. And there was also low diversity of uh, uh, flowering plants in that uh, area. Uh, so uh, over the uh, 15, 20 years, we've uh, made several uh, efforts uh, to uh, restore this, uh, this area. And so as of uh, 2016, we started controlling uh, the common reed with uh, geotextile membranes that we used, uh, also known as landscape fabric. And uh, we also added uh, am amendments to the soil. And we also uh, put, uh, put down seed mixes, uh, native plants. Uh, and we also wanted to monitor, monitor uh, uh, reed shoots uh, 
And so this is a picture from 2022. So you can see that it's really uh, come a long way over the last 15 years. We're quite proud now uh, to, to, to present this uh, to, uh, to uh, citizens as a very nice example of a beautiful uh, area that's uh, great for pollinators. So you can see uh, here that we adopted uh, differentiated uh, management. Uh, Marie's uh, alluded to this uh, previously. A few years ago, we started uh, um, uh, looking at hydroelectricity lines that traditionally uh, were being uh, mowed while well, underneath them we were mowing a lot at a very high frequency so we uh, got down to a one or two, once or twice uh, a year uh, mowing uh, on these areas uh, uh, along uh, various uh, highways etc so, and so that's really benefiting uh, pollinators uh, and uh, of course the uh, birds so these are significant uh, corridors for various animals as well so from these images you can see that uh, in our um, you can see the the diversity that has been coming back uh, in the in these areas uh, and they're really begin, becoming wilded and uh, so uh, uh, when we started uh, to leave uh, these areas to grow uh, and, and to wild uh, the uh, with efforts uh, outreach efforts in uh, Saint Laurent uh, uh, and our team uh, it's becoming more and more accepted even though there was a little bit of resistance at first and so now it's really been beneficial for uh, uh, biodiversity retaining this uh, <laughs> this um, biodiversity uh, in the uh, urban uh, milieu. So obviously this is uh, large public parks, uh, public areas uh, in the borough. Uh, so you can see here that this is, um, uh, uh, this is an area here uh, where you see uh, the reduction of the frequency of mowing on the main boulevards to save uh, uh, on maintenance costs and the protocol uh, uh, of management, the grassland management protocol. And so uh, you can see here that we were able to reinforce certain natural areas. Uh, there's also to encourage, encourage pollinators. Uh, and so there's uh, here you can see uh, that uh, Instead of transforming these spaces into grass, we just let some of the natural uh, flowers uh, grow. And so this is included in our tenders. Uh, uh, and we have a portion of this that we've integrated uh, protection of pollinators uh, that we're doing more and more in our projects in saint Laurent in our borough. And so in terms of educational programs, we have a strong program that we've developed over the last few years. It's a free program in schools, uh, 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 primary and secondary schools, and it's called the My Green School. And it's uh, an organization uh, that a uh, nonprofit uh, that uh, offers it. and. Uh, it's uh, one of the aspects of the program is to protect pollinators. And we want to also uh, raise awareness among students. Uh, when we start with uh, young people, well, then we can also get to parents and the rest of the population uh, and uh, inform them about uh, biodiversity uh, issues. Uh, and so we want uh, schools to uh, uh, to help uh, develop uh, the, the, pro the, prog the program. It can be... Um, uh, various uh, different initiatives. There's raised beds that are being put in place. Uh, uh, so for schools that ask to take place, uh, to, to take part in the program, well, there's classroom workshops, uh, observation booklets, and uh, uh, so for right now, we don't uh, have any results yet, and we, but we expect that the um, companies that are taking part in this will also be able to, uh, to 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 get involved. We have several schools though that have uh, uh, that have come on board, and so we've been able to protect uh, a large portion of our uh, borough this way. And so we have several uh, uh, resources, uh, educational resources. That uh, so our our uh, flagship activity is the. Um, um, in May, we have a biodiversity day. And last uh, year, we did a monarch festival where we had uh, several kiosks, uh, booths uh, for several uh, organizations that are specialized in this matter. So we had a pr uh, presentation of uh, insect collections. Uh, we distributed uh, uh, nectar producing plants to uh, people. And we also had uh, capsules on various insects. And so we got 500 participants to come out uh, for the day. So we're quite proud of that. 
Marjolaine uh, spoke uh, briefly about the Monarch mission, and so we invite them as well to the Insectarium. Uh, to, well, the people from the Insectarium to come to our borough to speak about uh, these uh, issues. Uh, uh, in terms of the Bee City program, we have uh, uh, pollinator uh, weeks as well with uh, various uh, 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 pop-up uh, workshops in our parks. Uh, uh, there's also part of a portion that's on uh, social media. I'm going to end with a, another example, a small-scale one that we uh, uh, brought about in the last few uh, years uh, in saint Laurent, And so it started with uh, the creation of a small... Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, it's a natural uh, area. So this is a this is a um, this is an area that is uh, not uh, not very wealthy. So uh, we were able to transform uh, this area of uh, of uh, grass really. Then we transform it into uh, in, in, in added several natural plants. Uh, uh, so this is. Uh, uh, an underprivileged neighborhood, uh, and um, once the project was uh, uh, set, well, we increased the size of it, and we uh, had several organizations, uh, sorry, several events with various uh, young people, and uh, to, to explain why these spaces are important. So we did an educational aspect of this, youth participation in the creation of the space. We also added several uh, artistic uh, aspects to this, uh, uh, as you can see, and there were also mosaic benches that we added. Uh, so at the end of the day, we were able to inaugurate the space uh, a few years ago, and it kind of shows uh, how a little space like this uh, that we consider that we that we just uh, think is not very beautiful. If we put a little bit of love and effort into it, it can become a citizen dedicated space, and also one where a pollinator that pollinators are uh, attracted to. So that will conclude our presentation. If you want to learn more, well, we mentioned several different things in here. You have the links here. Adele, uh, Jordan, and the team will be able to share them as well uh, uh, upon request, uh, if you would like. So on behalf of my colleague, colleagues and myself, I would like to thank you for listening. If you have any more specific questions, uh, uh, please in, uh, contact um, um, Marie-Ève Gagnon. Her address, uh, her uh, email is uh, indicated on the screen at the bottom in red. And so you can learn a little bit more uh, from her about what we're doing in Montreal. So I'm going to turn it over to Jordan and Adele. Thank you very much to all three of you for your excellent presentation. So we have a bit of time now for questions. Uh, so if you have any, uh, don't uh, hesitate to uh, write them in the Q&R, uh, Q&A. First question from Marjolaine uh, regarding uh, the uh, the boxes. Uh, is there a study about uh, about uh, the location where you put them, and what is the best height to place them at, and what distance uh, from gardens or from uh, the wild areas? Well, thank you, Adele. I'm not the right person. I'm not the person who uh, did this project, but then there are no studies in place about the best locations. We didn't do any studies on that uh, front. In terms of the distance, well, I think that uh, we can put them directly in the garden, but if you want to have more details, I could uh, put you in touch with the person who did the research. Does that answer your question? I think so. We didn't get any other follow-up questions. So wait for other questions. So you can put your questions in there. Do you have any suggestions for uh, pedestrians or for uh, bicycles? Or perhaps they're talking... Maybe I could uh, try to answer in our plan uh, uh, on the... Uh, the biodiversity corridor, creating a pedestrian, a, a multivalent, a polyvalent um, um, path uh, for pedestrians and for uh, and for bikes. Uh, so you can consult this. Uh, sorry, there, we did we did 
you want to create um, a bike path that go through uh, that go through these uh, sort of natural areas that are underneath uh, the hydro lines. So we're not at the point right now where we're developing our corridor, but it is part of our goals uh, that we have. Thank you, Etienne. Third question. How is the Senegam Burl juggling? Sorry, I'm not able to see that question. Uh, yeah, we definitely have a big challenge in front of us. Uh, it's not infinite. Uh, the for certain spaces, we have partnerships with various organizations for maintenance. Uh, we also obviously try to create uh, uh, landscapes that require the, as little uh, maintenance as possible. So in terms of uh, our wild patches, well, we want them to be able to regenerate uh, from year to year. So we do go in once in the fall and prepare them for the winter. But I would say in saint Laurent, we we're, we're lucky enough to have uh, um, uh, we have a very pro-environment uh, uh, elected officials, so, so the, uh, uh, there is a strong will to, to do these projects. And so there's 15 people on my team that work uh, on environmental files. And so uh, we do do uh, we do bring our uh, yearly uh, summaries to elected officials, and we are able to uh, pr produce all the projects that I show I I, I, I presented to you. So it is. Uh, Positive. Thank you very much. Uh, fourth question. I'm going to ask it in English. It'll just be easier. Best on the panel to reach out to in order to create a bee borough in a neighborhood in Ottawa. Si je peux euh, répondre peut-être, Adèle, ben, oui. est-ce euh, est que c'est pour des questions plus euh, reliées euh, à la logistique, au budget, ou est-ce que c'est plus euh, peut-être dans votre cours? Is this more to do with uh, logistics or budgets, or I'm not quite sure exactly how to answer. No, I'm not sure either. I think it's a question more to do with, uh, well, I think you could contact B-City or part of Pollinator Partnership. I think that that would be the easiest way to go. Another question here. Are there new mowing uh, policies uh, for the whole island of Montreal? I'm going to take that one. The will, uh, as you've seen, uh, the wording of our action is to uh, promote uh, uh, the reduction in the frequency of uh, mowing. And so we're currently implementing that plan. Uh, so in terms of those actions for now, there's no guidelines uh, for the entire city and all of our municipal spaces. We're going to do a, a tangible, well, we're going to do a concrete analysis of this and we're gradually trying to put this in place uh, so it doesn't cover the whole island of Montreal for now but it will be more and more uh, uh, prevalent as a practice so we're going to do outreach uh, uh, with different uh, public uh, workers and various maintenance workers sometimes this is a uh, uh, source outsourced to uh, different companies to do it so we need to make sure that uh, those actions are are being uh, followed, but uh, yeah, the city is definitely looking at those uh, uh, practices that are more user friendly and more uh, 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 and, and and that are more propitious for pollinators. In Saint Laurent, we uh, uh, recently uh, adopted uh, or passed a, a protocol on uh, the wild spaces, and so uh, the uh, greening uh, teams uh, looks look at uh, the height and the frequency of uh, mowing. Uh, and we're also looking at uh, public safety uh, measures, et cetera. So we're continuing to sort of frame those practices to make sure that we're finding the, uh, the right balance and uh, uh, making sure that we're able to uh, protect pollinators, which is obviously the ultimate objective here. Thank you very much. Another question. How does Montreal, Montreal find the plans for these projects? Is there uh, 
uh, a municipal uh, greenhouse uh, with uh, native plants, or do you have partnerships with uh, the private uh, sector? Maybe I could, you could give the example of uh, Saint Laurent after, but I'll start off uh, just to give the example for your borough anyway. But I'll start. But it's different from one borough to the next. Uh, uh, we don't have any municipal greenhouse. Uh, there are a few uh, boroughs that do, but as far as I know, we're not uh, self-sufficient in that regard. Uh, boroughs uh, do uh, buy, purchase the uh, plants uh, from uh, private uh, suppliers. Uh, uh, it does vary really from one borough to the next. I don't think I can go any further than that, but if you have specific questions on that, uh, you can write to us. Uh, I can do some research uh, with the very different boroughs. Question for Etienne, does the protocol uh, of, uh, uh, herb, uh, of uh, plant uh, wilded uh, uh, management, is that public? It's called the friche herbacée in French. Uh, I don't think it's, I'm not sure if it's available. I'm not sure what the context is or why you want that from, I don't think it is uh, available now. I think it was an internal protocol that was written for uh, our internal management at our uh, borough. If I can just uh, add to that, I think uh, Tuesday this week, we had uh, Montérégie uh, that presented uh, uh, a guide who launched a guide uh, uh, on uh, management of uh, wilded areas. And I think it is uh, available to the public. So I think that that could be a good uh, sort of uh, starting point. Uh, I haven't looked at it myself, but I know it just came out uh, this week. It's for a city in Montérégie in a different uh, uh, region of Quebec, south of Montreal. I have a question that was translated. Uh, what challenges are you finding to getting uh, your hands on uh, land uh, to create spaces for pollinators? Since I'm at the central services, I'll try to answer, uh, but it's um, mostly the parks uh, that are in, that are responsible for actions uh, to uh, protect up to 10% of uh, the areas. Uh, so there are challenges for sure, uh, from what I've heard, but this is uh, quite an ambitious goal that we have. Uh, it's in the climate plan, it's in the uh, poll pollinator protection plan. So if you want to have uh, understand uh, the experiences uh, more specifically, I could communicate with uh, the person in charge of uh, parks in Montreal, but I don't think we could. It's, not easy to know what uh, we anyway are at the city we don't uh, take care of that uh, in terms of acquiring uh, uh, purchasing land for uh, natural uh, areas thank you very much are there any other questions the question relative to ottawa is it possible to share material educational materials to understand how we can try to build uh, borough uh, that uh, promotes uh, pollinators. If I can answer that, I don't have a specific guide to share. It was done in an organic manner over the years uh, in terms of uh, political will, etc., on the basis of political will. But uh, B-City, I think you do offer that type of the dirt, guidance. Uh, we... uh, and uh, two, we, yeah, the presentation will be available. And I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't mind uh, trying to group together certain uh, initiatives that, that can help you with your planning. You can uh, send me a little request in that regard. Uh, there's no problem with that. Thank you very much. Another question here in English. Do you think that Montreal has an efficient uh, active plan in terms of uh, climate change that includes uh, biodiversity? 
I'm going to answer that one. It's our office uh, that uh, drafted the plan, the climate plan. Yes, I believe that we do have a good plan in place, and it does include uh, uh, protection of uh, biodiversity. There's a whole aspect of this that is adaptation to climate change, and uh, there are several projects uh, there to protect uh, Th against several different things, uh, against drought, against uh, floods, etc. So, and different things uh, to do with plants, uh, and they're uh, protecting plants. So, there is the, the the biodiversity aspect is always part of our uh, considerations with regard to uh, climate change. So, this is uh, part of the of uh, the city of Montreal's plans. Thank you very much. Do we have a last question? So last question here, somebody asked uh, as an owner of a home that uses uh, plants to attract uh, pollinators, what else can we do to attract uh, pollinators to a private, uh, a private lot, if you will, any advice there? Marjolaine, that'd be a good question for you, yeah. I was going to jump in. Uh, yeah, you can put uh, nichoirs in uh, for pollinators, that is, uh, little boxes. Uh, you can also have uh, uh, for uh, boxes on the on the land, uh, on the soil, sorry. You, also, you have to have them in sunny areas where water uh, is easily uh, sort of run off, runs off easily uh, so that uh, bees uh, can uh, set up uh, well there. So you can put those, so it's a very beautiful uh, behavior to observe. In fact, if I can just add to that, uh, that's at the end of the uh, pollinator protection plan. Uh, it's specifically uh, uh, Appendix D of our plan. And uh, we have it's a portion where we say we give some advice there to citizens and give uh, uh, access to different uh, water sources, etc. And uh, we kind of give some advice on how to prepare uh, for the winter, uh, prepare habitats for the winter. And so we have a site as well on pollinators. Uh, which is very interesting and which uh, has a lot of information altogether, which is uh, very easy uh, to, uh, which is uh, quite simplified for uh, citizens to understand. Uh, so for the second, it's the second link there for uh, Espace de la Vie. That's an excellent uh, entry point. Uh, thank you very much, Marise. Great. So I think uh, we don't have a lot more time for questions. So thank you very much to all three of you for your great work uh, at uh, the Insectarium Espace pour la Vie and the City of Montreal and everything that you're doing for pollinators. And thank you for having taken the time to share all this information with us. I'd also like to thank everyone who took the time to listen to us today and to uh, chat with us also. And uh, this webinar has been uh, 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 recorded in English and in French. So both versions are available uh, on B City Canada's, uh, you will be available very soon uh, on uh, B City Canada's uh, YouTube channel. And we're going to send you a link uh, by email very soon. So we're going to end it there. Uh, this, uh, so uh, have a great day and uh, stay uh, tuned for the next B City webinar. Thank you very much again.